As you're continuing to grow your business online, you're probably finding that you need more and more specialized tools to really be effective. These tools can be very, very good at pinpointing one certain thing. So maybe they get your emails out at the right time or they analyze the right piece of data. And all of these tools have certain piece of information that they don't necessarily share with other tools. So how do you connect them up to make sure that you have a very clear holistic view? Well, there are three options. The first is to do it manually, which is the worst, slowest, and hardest option. The second is to hire a programmer, which in a lot of situations isn't much better. And the third is to use Zapier. Zapier is a great option for connecting systems together very easily and quickly. So today I'm gonna to introduce you to Zapier. I'm gonna show you how it's structured and I'm gonna walk you through a few easy examples of how to use it so you can get started today. My name is Trent Canelli. I'm a marketing strategist, and on this channel, I talk about all the things that you can do to improve your business through marketing, sales, and analytics. So if that sounds good to you and you're excited, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, comment and let me know how many tools you're using, what your current solution is, if you're pulling your hair out, if you have no hair like me because of this or whatever, and let's get started. Okay, so what is Zapier? Zapier is a tool that connects a whole bunch of other tools together. So from WordPress to Wix and Squarespace and ActiveCampaign, anything that you can really think of is probably on Zapier and probably has a way to connect with just about anything else on Zapier. The way that they do this is through an API or application program interface, which is a way that all of these systems allow you as a programmer to program an application that will work with their system. So it's a way of external people programming something that works with their internal system. Zapier's kind of taken advantage of this because they've said, all right, well, all of these places have APIs. I'm just gonna grab their API information and I'm gonna use it to interconnect with other systems. So you don't need to do that extra programming work where you would if you decided to do it manually, as I mentioned, or hire a programmer who would need to always do that themselves. This is a very good way to interconnect devices and automate lots of things very quickly. Now let's talk about how Zapier is structured now. So on the surface level, Zapier is split into triggers and actions. Triggers are when automations start. So when this happens, we start the automation. When a purchase occurs, we start this automation. When someone signs up to our newsletter, we start this automation, etc. Actions are everything that come after that. So when somebody makes a purchase on WordPress, we update our CRM with their information, etc. Each app is gonna have triggers and actions that have been built by Zapier. So what you're gonna find is that sometimes they're not super robust, but for most of the really big apps, they're very, very robust, and there's a lot that you can do with it. Diving a little deeper, there is an extra thing that's not a trigger and not really an action that's related to each system. There are these generalized by Zapier actions. And what they are, they're things like filters, they do math, they split, they have lookup tables, all sorts of stuff that allows you to break down the data in a more generalized form. And the real benefit to this is that you can make sure that the right data is sent to the system at the right time, or you can make sure that you are translating the information in a form that makes sense to the new system, or uh, looking up tables so that you can do conversion charts, et cetera. So there's a lot that you can do with these by Zapier actions. They're really, really valuable. Okay, so now let's go ahead and jump into the computer and we're gonna dive into a few that we can look at together so you can understand this process a bit better. All right, so I want to create three different Zaps to kind of help you to understand how to build Zaps with Zapier. Uh, they're gonna be three very different things. The first one I wanna do is a Facebook page Zap that is going to help me to know every time someone messages me through my Facebook page, because those notifications don't seem to come through the regular Facebook messenger. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set it up so that when they message me on Facebook messenger, it goes through to Slack. So it notifies me on Slack to go ahead and check that. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a zap. Now I have everything pretty much hooked up already. So you're not going to see me go through the hookup process for these apps, but basically for the most part, it's just log in with your credentials. Okay. Sometimes it'll be give the API key or whatever, which just means that you need to go to that system and copy that API key. So here we're going to click Facebook messenger. We're going to click choose a trigger event and that trigger event is new message sent to page. So let's continue to get more specific. We're going to choose the account and that is my account. Continue. And I want to pick my page. That is my page. Continue. It's just a lot of little steps. We're going to test that trigger to make sure that there's actually something that's going to happen there. And looks like we've got something there. So good. 
So we can continue to the action. So once that trigger has happened, what are we gonna do next? So the action here we want to do is to go to Slack. We're going to choose an event and we're gonna send a channel message. So this is gonna to be to a specific channel because I don't want it to flood the rest of my feed. I already have this channel set up right here. You can see it's Facebook messages. So let's just go ahead and send channel message, continue. Let's choose my account. That's my account, continue. And then let's pick that channel. So there's my channel. So uh, the channel is FB messages, just as it is over here. FB messages, so we're good to go there. Now, there are a lot of different settings you can do. Uh, we can enter message text, which is gonna be personalized based on the message that is sent to you on your Facebook page. So here I wanna know what the sender's full name is. I wanna put a space between it, otherwise it's gonna come up as full name and then the message right away, which you don't want. And then the message here. So we can even get a little bit more specific. So maybe we'll say name colon, then we'll do an enter and then we'll put message colon. So that way it'll put name and then the name of the person, message and then the message that they have, okay? So that's gonna be a little bit clearer. There's lots of other settings that we can put on here. We can set it up as a bot. That's what I prefer to do is to set it up as a bot just so that it's clear that it's not coming from a person. And so we don't have to have any confusion there. We can just know that this bot is trying to tell me something, okay? Um, all that's doing is just aesthetic. So you can change the bot's name and all that sort of stuff. There's lots of little changes that you can make. All of these little changes are different based on the actions and triggers that you're using. For now, what we really need is we just need it to update in the channel so we don't need a specific thread or anything like that. We're just gonna have it pushed to the channel uh, right away, okay? Let's go ahead and continue. And now what we should see, so this message you're looking at here, that's all the information that Zapier pulled in from Facebook Messenger, from that test Facebook message that it got. So we're seeing this information here and this information here, and this is how it's gonna format it, okay? So that's what we're going to send to Slack. So let's go ahead and test that. And it looks like I got a message right here. Name Zap Zaplar and message hello world. So now I should be, if I took that live, able to go over, I would just turn it on here to Facebook Messenger, type of test message to myself and I would see that message come through. Now I'm not gonna do that because I already have this live and I don't wanna set it live twice, but there, that's how you do that nice and easy. So the second zap that I wanna do is an automated blog post. So anytime that I post something to YouTube, I want it to also post that to my WordPress site, to my blog post. So you can do this for Medium or any other system that you're using, just depending on how the settings look, but this is just an easy way for me to put all of my videos on my website as well without having to do that extra manual work. So let's go ahead and go back out. And we can, I'll name this one. I didn't name the last one, but you could name it, of course, whatever you want. I'll name this one YouTube to WordPress blog. So now the first thing we want to do is find our trigger, which is anytime that a YouTube video posts to my channel. So the interesting thing about this is that you can pick new video, new video by search, new video in channel, any channel. So Peter McKinnon's channel could have a new video and then you want to put that on your blog. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in showing videos on my channel, okay? So we're gonna select new video and channel. We're gonna choose my account. And then what it's asking for here is the channel ID. So you can see that right here. So I just need to go to my channel and grab that URL in my channel. Click continue. And then we should be able to test this and see if it works or not. All right, so we have a video. So this is a video I just put up yesterday. And so it's got all of this information and I can put this information on my site. So let's go ahead and continue that. Then I wanna upload that info to WordPress. So I'm just gonna search for WordPress here. Let's choose an action. We're gonna create a post, continue. So we want this to post. So we wanna put it in as a blog post, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and enter our title and the title is gonna be the same as the title of the YouTube video. So see, it's got that data already parsed out. You can just click on it and put it right there. The content can be your description information. And then you can add other information if you want to. So like who's the author? I mean, I'm the only author on the site, so I don't really need to do anything with that. Um, the format, what category it's in. So that I will do because I have different categories for different uh, types of blogs I put out there. So for instance, videos, I want to have 
in a specific category because then I can do them as a specific drop down menu on WordPress. Any tags or statuses or anything like that that I want to add. Okay, so that's all uploaded and created. Now, if I wanted to, and this is how I do it on my actual blog setup, I could add a delay in there. So let me just show you the one that I have live here. So as well as uploading it, I have this delay for 24 hours. I do that so that the video gets the most traction on YouTube first and then people can watch it on the site after that. Uh, so you could add a delay. So let me just show you what the action looks like. So I have it delayed for 24 hours before it takes the next step, which is to actually create the post. So in this situation, I have it uploaded, but waiting, and then you delay and then you create the post. So you could do that as well. This is one of those actions by Zapier that I was telling you about before. Um, so it just, it just allows you to have a little more flexibility with how and when you push things out. But in any case, this is done. So all I would need to do is to test it and it looks like it is good. The post should have been sent to my WordPress page. So I can go ahead and check that really quickly. And then you can see that it's here in drafts, but if I wanted to, I could have it published right away as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let's just go back up here to setting up the action. Let's look for status. Yeah, here we go. And we want the status changed to published. Okay. That's going to make it go live right away. And you don't have to do any extra work to actually make that go live. So just refresh this, continue it, test it again, and you'll be good to go there. So I'm not going to do that because my zap again is already set up to do that. But all you would have to do is test it again and you'll see that it's going to go live right away. Okay. So last step, let's say that I want to put people down a funnel on an automation on active campaign. Once they've booked appointments through my Calendly calendar app. Okay. So I want to know if they've scheduled an appointment on a specific calendar, then what's the next step that they need to take an active campaign. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to create a new one. We'll just go ahead and call it Calendly to active campaign. Let's start with Calendly. There it is right there in the menu. And that's nice. So let's say invitee created an event. Let's go ahead and continue. We're going to get more specific here. So I have a lot of different calendars. Some of them are hidden. Some of them are public on my Calendly. So let's log into my Calendly real quick. We're going to continue again. Let's just make sure that that worked. Good. So we've got an invitee. This is a good test. That's for a 15 minute meeting, but we want to limit it to people who have paid for my coaching and we're only scheduling them or looking closely at them if they've actually paid for the coaching. Okay. So let's continue and we'll get a little more specific. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do that with a filter. The filter is going to allow us to specifically limit which calendars are getting through. And we're looking for the event type name, event type. There we go. Event type name. We want this to be 90 minute coaching call. Cause that's what I call that calendar. Okay. So we're going to say text exactly matches 90 minute coaching conversation. Great. So you'll be able to see this one's a 15 minute meeting. So this is not going to work. So let's test it out and it should stop it. Good. Your zap would not have continued because that's a different calendar from what I want to actually make it through this system. Okay. And then after that happens, so we're good with this. We can add one more step for active campaign. So let's go ahead and choose an action and we're going to create slash update a contact. So the reason create slash update is important is because you don't want to have multiple versions of the same contact, right? So if they've already been created, you just need to update them. All right. So continue. Now, do we want to add them to a list? This is a personal preference. At this point, we get into active campaign automations. You can check out this video for more information on some automations just to kind of understand them a little bit better. I'm not really going to get detailed into that here because that's not really the scope of this, but you could add them to a list if that's how you trigger your automation. I like to do it with tags. So the way that I've done that with this one is first I want to enter their name. So we'll go ahead and put invitee name there and then we're going to put the invitees email address in there because active campaign always works off of the email address. Um, so we want to make sure that we, we have that in there. So, uh, we don't need the last name or anything. First name is enough. Most of the time people are not giving you the last name. A lot of these are details that I have added in, in the past. So we can kind of ignore these. We're looking for tag. There we go. So tags right here. And I'm looking for the tag conversation call scheduled. So that's going to help me once we actually get into the automation, because I have the automation trigger when someone gets this tag inside of active campaign. Okay. So then that's really all you need to do here. 
<clears throat> you just need to have the email, the name, and the tag. All of this other stuff, a lot of these are my generated fields, so I don't always need to enter these in. So we'll just go ahead and skip those. Uh, then we can just test the action. We can just do a, a test or a retest and we would just turn it on then. So it's a, just a simple three steps, created the event on Calendly, we filter them out so that we make sure that we hit the same people, the right people every time. And then we create or update that contact with the information we want them to be updated with on active campaign. And so because active campaigns automation is activating on that tag conversation call scheduled, it's going to update them with that tag. And then that's all you need to do. We're good to go there. So nice and easy, super simple. You can see that a lot of these are pretty simple. But you can get super, super complex with Zapier automations and integrations. I've done some with like huge lookup tables that have just been insane. It works. Uh, it's just, it takes a lot more brain power to get there. So these are simple, start with these and then we can go from there. So those are only a few examples. There are obviously way more ways to use Zapier. The idea here was just to kind of expose you to it and help you to understand how you can be a little more complex, but also very simplistic at the same time. Obviously you can get way more complex with your systems, but let's just slow down. Let's start here and then we'll, we'll get a little more complex as we go. In any case, let me know what you think of this kind of automation or of Zapier. If you've used it in the past and how you feel about it, I would love to know. Otherwise, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and I'll catch you in the next one.